Primarily this channel is a Linux channel, but every so often I do like to take a look at FreeBSD and projects based on FreeBSD. So in today's video, with the release of FreeBSD 13 being only a few days ago, I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at the free. BSD 13 installation process. Now this isn't an installation guide but I definitely do want to make one of those in the future but what I want to do in today's video is go ahead and go through the free BSD installer and then go ahead and install the desktop and take a little bit of a look at what the experience is like. So we're going to be going ahead and doing that right now on the Linux lounge. If you enjoyed this video consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube, links in the description. Righto. Well, as I said during the opening of today's video, today we're going to go ahead and install FreeBSD 13 in a virtual machine. Now, this is nothing that I haven't done before, and it's actually fairly simple. FreeBSD's installation process is kind of a mixture between Debian's and Arch Linux's, I think. The first part of the installation is guided, very nice and easy, and that gets the base install set up and all that sort of thing. And then after that, you have to go ahead and install your own desktop environment and stuff, just like you would have to in Arch Linux. Or at least that's kind of how I see it. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. So first we're going to go ahead and boot multi-user and then it will go ahead and load everything up and it should take us right to the installer. And here we are in the FreeBSD 13 install. As you can see it looks really old school but I've got to be honest I kind of love it. So let's go ahead and get this installed. So first let's hit install and then let's go ahead and select our keyboard layout. So I need the UK keyboard layout and there it is. Let's go ahead and select that one. And next we need the host name for this machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it let's say FreeBSD PC. And next we need to go ahead and select what components we want to install. So for this I want all of the ones that are already selected as well as the port and source tree. The reason for that is port has a lot of software that you'll probably want to use and source is apparently required for some drivers or something. I'm not sure, I've just been advised to select it. I'm not super familiar with BSD yet. And next we're going to go ahead and select the ZFS file system. Apparently this is a major reason to use FreeBSD because this file system is really good. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And then it should, in theory, let us go ahead and install it. Now I've gone ahead and installed FreeBSD 12 in the past and actually all of this wasn't there before so let's see what we've got here. So apparently you can go ahead and encrypt the disk, select your partition scheme, your swap size, mirror swap, encrypt swap, all this sort of thing so I've got to say that's pretty cool that they've added all this in because it seems like it would be quite useful. So let's go ahead and install it and it's letting us select our virtual device type. This wasn't there before either so that's pretty cool. If you want to have a RAID setup you can do that but since this is a virtual machine we don't need any of that so let's just go ahead and hit enter and then we want to install this to our virtual disk so let's go ahead and select that and apparently not enough disk selected so I guess we didn't select it so let's try that again I see so it's expecting us to hit the space bar and then it'll go ahead and select it so that's kind of interesting so it should now go ahead and wipe the whole disk and install FreeBSD 13 and it would seem that it's now doing that and there we go it's going ahead and installing our FreeBSD 13. And there we go, our FreeBSD is now installed, so now we have to go ahead and set up our root stuff and our user account and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So first it's asking us for a root password, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And we've got to retype it. And there we go, I've gone ahead and set up the root password. Now it's asking us to connect to the internet, so I'm going to go ahead and select the virtual network adapter. And then I'm going to go ahead and do IPv4, that's fine. DHCP, yeah, that's fine. And it's going to go ahead and set that up. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's do that, sure. And then it's going to go ahead and set up our networking again. Don't need any of that because I'm just a home user. And now it's asking us to set up our region. So I am in Europe and I want to see if I can find UK. There it is. That looks fine. That would seem to be the date. That would seem to be the time. And now it's giving us some system services that you can optionally use. I believe, although I might be mistaken, that we do need mouse D. I could be wrong about that. And I believe we also need NTP date. I don't know, like I say, I'm not super familiar with BSD. I'm just going to go ahead and select it. Better safe than sorry, I guess. And presumably we also need PowerD, although this is a virtual machine, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to select it anyway. And next it's giving us some system hardening options. I 
don't know if these were available in the last version of FreeBSD. If they were, they certainly weren't this obvious. This is a virtual machine, so I don't need any of those. Would you like to add users to the installed system now? Yes, I would like to make a user account. So let's go ahead and call it Linux Lounge. And for our full name, just Linux Lounge. I'll leave that empty. And for login group, I believe we need wheel. As many users of other Unix-like operating systems will know, this will let me run root commands and such. I also think I need to be a part of the video group in order to run a desktop environment, but I might be mistaken about that, so I'm going to put that in. And I'm not going to invite it to any other groups. That seems to be about fine. Login class default, that seems fine. Shell, I'm not too bothered about, so just leave it as the default. Home directory, that's fine. Home directory permissions, leave it empty, that's fine. Use password-based authentication, yes. Use an empty password, no. Use a random password, no. And I've got to put in a password. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to set it as the same password as the root password. And lock the account after creation. No, and all of that is fine. So I'm going to type in yes. There seems to be an error adding the user Linux lounge. That's very strange. I wonder if it'll let us have it anyway. Uh, it seems to me that apparently the group wheel and video doesn't exist. Maybe you need to set them up with commas. So I'm going to go ahead and try to set up this user account again because I think I've made a mistake somehow. Okay, there we go. It's gone ahead and successfully added me to the user group. I'm going to go ahead and try to add all the groups I need to be a part of after install because for some reason that kind of seemed to error it out. I don't know what the problem was almost certainly something that i'm doing wrong but let's just go ahead and continue with the install so add new user no and now it would seem to me that we have finished our freebsd install the only last one thing that i do want to do is go ahead and install the freebsd handbook because that's always good to have but that seems to be about right it selected the english one by default and then it will go ahead and download the freebsd handbook which is very useful and once we've done that i'm going to go ahead and reboot into my install of freebsd and there we go, I've gone ahead and installed the handbook. So now we're going to go ahead and reboot into the finished FreeBSD install. So now if we go ahead and reboot, it should reboot the virtual machine. And there we go, here we are in my finished install of FreeBSD. So let's go ahead and log in and just see if everything works. And there we go. As you can see, very much like Arch Linux, there is pretty much nothing installed by default. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go off and install XFCE and maybe some other stuff and see where we get. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would probably like to see me do that, but this isn't a guide on how to install FreeBSD by any means. If you want a guide on how to install FreeBSD, go ahead and take look at the free BSD handbook. Now the reason I'm not doing a video guide is because those get outdated very quickly and that's just outside of the scope of this video. But also the free BSD handbook is among the best documentation in the open source world. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But with that said, I'll be back with a finished install of free BSD. And here we are in my install of free BSD. All I've done is installed the XFC desktop, installed light DM and changed the background and installed Firefox and as you can see it all works really really well and it was actually very easy to get set up too because the FreeBSD handbook is actually really really good. Definitely on par with if not better than the Arch Linux documentation which is celebrated as being excellent in the Linux world. Now if you have some knowledge of Linux already FreeBSD is going to be super super easy to get to grips with since the day-to-day -day experience of using it is very much like Linux. Now it does have its own advantages and disadvantages but I think generally speaking the experience is similar to Linux. Now as you can see I've got XFC set up I've gone ahead and changed the desktop background and I've also installed Firefox so we're going to go ahead and launch that and as you can see you can run pretty much whatever program you want on it. Now FreeBSD obviously doesn't have quite the application support that Linux does but I've got to say it's really really quite impressive. If you want to run an open source program, a vast majority of them are available for FreeBSD, if not possible to compile on FreeBSD. Now, stuff gets a little bit harder when you want to start running proprietary software and maybe more obscure software, but you will be very impressed with the software that is available on FreeBSD. So with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed me installing FreeBSD. I've got to say it was really, really easy, so if you know a thing or two about about Linux, definitely try to install FreeBSD. I've got to say, from what I've seen so far, I'm quite impressed with this release of FreeBSD 13, and I would definitely expect more FreeBSD videos in the future. But with that said, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.